Hi everyone, this is Top3D Shop, and in this video we will tell you about the Chidi Tech iFast FDM 3D Printer. Chidi Technology is a relatively young Chinese company with extensive experience in the development and production of 3D printers, supplying its equipment to Asia, Europe, North and South America. Chidi Tech focuses on creating relatively affordable 3D printers, covering not only FDM devices, but resin printers as well. First off, let's look at the supply package of the iFast and move on to its structural components and features. The printer comes with a set of spare parts, tools, and consumables. A spool of red PLA filament, a toolbox, clamps, spare screws and fuses, replaceable nozzles. Also included are metal rollers with fasteners for holding the spools, scraper, two hexagon screwdrivers, power and LAN cables, and a slotted screwdriver. Another important part is the BuildTac type coated metal bed plate and a swappable extruder. One of the key features on many Chidi Tech 3D printers that will be tested later. A 16GB USB flash drive is a nice final touch to the whole set. Speaking about the design of the iFast, the enclosure is made of plastic with QR codes on the sidewall for convenient access to detailed instructions. Three retractable rods for holding the spools are located at the back, also housing the power supply socket, the on-off toggle switch, and a LAN interface at the bottom rear area. The machine is closed off from the top with a plastic cover on four magnets. The left panel contains critical safety notices. The case also has handles for easy relocation. Let's remove the top cover and take a look at the kinematics and the extruder setup. The iFast has a generic kinematics arrangement with one NEMA 17 stepper motor per axis based on rail guides and reinforced with a machined metal crossmember on the X axis. There are currently two extruders installed. The first extruder on this machine is on the right, with the second one, respectively, on the left. Opening the front door, we see a platform with a bed plate cover laid flush and evenly, being fixed with 30 magnets on the platform itself. At the same time, it's easy to remove and place back. An air duct is located on the back wall. The printer has a heated chamber for stable printing with ABS or polycarbonate. The extruders change height mechanically. This solution eliminates the need to use a servo drive and decreases the overall print head weight. A similar solution is found in 3D printers by the Dutch company Ultimaker. All Chidi devices are equipped with a unified touchscreen with multilingual intuitive interface, offering manual control, preheating and filament settings, calibration, and so on. Another noteworthy mention is Wi-Fi connectivity. The top row of icons is responsible for sound and internal backlight, as well as the webcam installed inside the build chamber, which allows you to monitor the printing process. The first step in running the device will be the homing procedure, for the printer's axes to reach the limit switches. At the same time, we'll listen to what kind of noise is audible. Judging by the glowing LED in the corner of the printer, the iFast is equipped with optical limit switches. The printer is fairly quiet. The webcam we talked about earlier is fixed on a bracket, and we can also see a rod on a soft coupling driving the Y axis. Now let's take a closer look at the movement along the Z axis. This part of the machine is not easy to access, but we will try anyway. The Z axis is driven by two stepper motors located on the sides. Unlike the more traditional arrangement with the screw rod and rail guides at the back, in the iFast they're located on the sides. A rare, elegant, but in some cases controversial solution. The extruder switching system works as follows. There is no shutoff mechanism that disengages the inactive nozzle. So we assume that when printing with more fluent plastics such as PVA, the excess material will ooze out pulled by gravity. After launching the extruder change mode, let's see how the extruder swap process is executed. First, you need to undo the four screws securing the casing with the screwdriver. Then you need to undo five more screws that hold the extruder to the carriage. As you can see, this is an integral unit, already housing all of the electronic components, with the ribbon cable connected to each of the extruders. We turn it off, install a single hot-end extruder, and assemble it in reverse order. We end up with a single extruder equipped with a 0.4mm steel nozzle, which can heat up to 275 degrees Celsius and print with any generic plastic. Now, we will calibrate the Z-axis using the special leveling paper from the kit, which also includes a full-color illustrated instruction manual. The manual also shows how the first layer should look like, since it is the most important indicator of proper calibration. After placing the paper under the nozzle, we then move the platform in micro-steps until the paper starts to rub against the nozzle. Finally, slight friction can be felt, indicating that the calibration is complete. 
After putting the filament spool on the holder, it needs to be tightened while the filament is fed through a hole in the rear wall. Now let's heat up the extruder and feed the ABS plastic. The touchscreen shows a preview of the model that we have prepared for printing. And this is how preparing the model for printing in Sheedy slicing software looks like. We will print this ordinary tower using ABS. The slicer highlights overhanging areas with blue, but the tower can be printed out without supports and should be a great test for this 3D printer. We can change the number of engaged extruders by clicking the left mouse button as well as get access to other important print settings. The default preset was developed for nylon, and since nylon shares the same temperature settings with ABS, we won't be changing these here. We'll set the layer height to 0.16mm in fill to 30% and print without supports. Print speed settings are located at the end of the list and are quite basic for any slicing software. For ABS, we'll set the temperature to 245 degrees, the bed temperature to 110 degrees for all layers, and since this printer is equipped with a chamber heating system, we'll set the build chamber temperature to 50 degrees. The expert settings give access to the full list of editable functions. The same logic is used in many slicers, for example, Cura. All hidden and more detailed print settings can be found here in the expert section. Let's scale the model up and make it bigger. This will make the test for the printer more complicated in terms of overhanging areas. We set the scale to 150% of the original size, then clicked prepare, uploaded the finished file to a USB flash drive, and sent it for printing. The print settings can be changed on the fly at any time right from the touchscreen. At this stage, the extruder and platform are still warming up and all the necessary parameters are displayed on the screen. We decided to replace the natural color ABS with dark green metallic one, since the dark color will make potential flaws that may appear during print more visible. Since our calibration was done properly, the first layer is executed perfectly, exactly as described in the instruction manual. The printer is almost noise-free, courtesy of the silent stepper motor drives. The touchscreen shows the current print speed and the estimated time remaining until the end of the print. The printer's performance is already noticeable. The model is being printed out great. The ABS print is complete and let's look at the result. The layers lie even with no stringing on the part. No vibrations or other artifacts are visible. The result is beyond good. The adhesion is excellent even after the platform has completely cooled down. For the next print, we will install the dual extruder and feed two PLA filaments of different colors. Next in line is the nozzle convergence test print. At the end of this print, the second extruder should clearly fall into the center of the line printed by the first hot end. If the result is unsatisfactory, the offset can be corrected in the touchscreen menu. The result is excellent. The nozzles are aligned perfectly and in our case, nothing needs to be adjusted. Now we'll put pre-dried PVA plastic in the second extruder and print out a quadcopter drone part as a test. The model has 90 degree overhangs, which will be supported by PVA. As we noted at the beginning, the extruder does not have a shutoff valve for the inactive nozzle and, as expected, we see PVA oozing and leaving strings. Overall, the result is similar to what you would get when using 3D printers with similar extruder designs, for example, the Raze 3D Pro 2. Before printing the next layer, the nozzle goes through the wipe tower, cleaning itself and minimizing plastic debris in the working area. The filament is retracted after the wipe tower, followed by the mechanical switching between hot ends. So, the print is completed and let's see the result. We removed the part from the bed to dissolve the supports and examine the final make. After an hour, the PVA dissolved in warm water completely, we removed the skirt base and dried the part thoroughly. In our opinion, this is an excellent result for a printer of this level. In these areas, everything was packed with supports. The layers did not sag a bit, although the surface in this area is relatively rough, but this is absolutely normal. Let's summarize and start with the cons. The extruder swap, marketed by Chidi as being quick, in fact, can hardly be called fast. It requires reconnecting the cables and some disassembly procedures. In general, this is not the most convenient implementation of such a solution, but it works great with no additional settings changes in the slicer needed. And the print results are solid proof of that. We would classify the mechanical print head switching system as a disadvantage, but this is a subjective opinion. Such a solution does make the extruder lighter, but at the same time, its reliability could be higher. It's rather uneasy to connect the ribbon cable when replacing the dual extruder with the high temperature single nozzle one.
With the attractive and expensive-looking plastic casing, the Chidi Tech iFast can be compared to equipment by Tier Time and XYZ Printing. The machine is equipped with an easy-to-use bed plate cover, which is fixed evenly to the bed with a large number of magnets. The design of the printer has many durable milled aluminum parts, pointing to a serious approach when this machine was being developed and manufactured. All Chidi 3D printers have a digital platform based on ARM controllers. One of its main advantages is a single user interface for the entire lineup, which ensures high usability. Another benefit of the machine is the build chamber heating system, which uses a single heating module located on the rear wall. Unlike the CreateBot 3D printers, which share the same price category, Chidi's heating module is less bulky, but it is unable to heat the chamber above 70 degrees. The plastic used for the printer's external panels is vulnerable to high temperatures, and although the body is not tightly sealed, the temperature inside the machine is preserved efficiently during printing. The advantages also include the webcam and Wi-Fi connectivity. We tested the Qi Tech iFast with standard ABS and PLA, as well as dual extrusion printing with PLA. The print quality turned out to be quite high, and it's safe to recommend this machine for everyday FDM printing with one or two materials. This is Top 3D Shop with the Chidi Tech iFast 3D Printer Review. Subscribe to our channel, leave your comments below, and hit the like button if you've enjoyed the video. See you soon!